Good morning, good morning to everyone that is here with us, whether you're here in the present or if you're here virtually, I want to welcome everyone to this grand occasion. My name is Carlton Stevens and I'm the mayor of Wilson. And on behalf of the city of Wilson, I want to welcome you to our city, whether you're online or if you're present. Today we are here to honor a great woman. Her achievements, I cannot even begin to list them all. She is such a powerful woman, uh, someone that I look up to and have looked up to my entire life. And for over 18 years, she has served our state as a representative with the North Carolina House. And she has been honored to be chosen to serve on the North Carolina Employment Security Review Board. Maya Angelou once said, you can only be accomplished by something you love. And it is so obvious that she loves what she does, she does what she loves, and she loves who she does it for. So I tell you, I'm so excited today, and I just want to thank everyone for being here to share this glorious occasion. And with no further ado, we are going to begin with a word of prayer from Reverend E. Ray Bonham, who is also like a brother to Representative Butterfield, Pastor Bonham. of every good and perfect gift. You are the one in whom we move, live, and have all of our beings. We thank you, dear Lord, for how you have watched over us from the very early existence of our lives, even up into this moment. We thank you, dear Lord, for the 
opportunity you have afforded us today to come to honor and celebrate Gene Farmer Butterfield. We acknowledge, O oh God, that without you we can do nothing, but with you we know all things are possible. So we pause now to solicit your grace. We pause to ask for your guidance. We pause to ask for your wisdom. Be with us and be with her, O oh God, as you have in times past. For we know that you are able to do all things and that your grace is sufficient for her every need. Bless her and keep a watch over, give her wisdom, give her strength, give her understanding, and let her be a blessing to those she served. For we thank you now and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Bonham, thank you so much for that word of prayer. We are going to now move into our tributes. We have a uh, a list of distinguished guests, and I'm so honored to be able to just name them off. And once uh, I get through with the names of everyone, we're just going to go in the order that I call you and just give you tributes. Just say what you want to say about Representative Butterfield. But we do want to remind you, we do want to keep it at two minutes each. All right. So we're going to begin with Miss Christy Jones, who's the chief of staff for Governor Roy Cooper, Dr. Betty Applewhite, who's a friend and classmate. John Nash, the Executive Director of the ARC of North Carolina. Dave Richard, Deputy Secretary of North Carolina Medicaid, Department of Health and Human Services. Helen Torres, the Hispanic Community Leader and Organizer. Lee Rodeo, former intern, North Carolina House and a law student. The Honorable Rob Boyette, Chairman, Wilson County Commissioners. Honorable Deborah Powell, Wilson County Board of Education. The Honorable Quentin Summer, Resident Superior Court Judge. The Honorable Don Davis, North Carolina uh, Senate. The Honorable Becky Carney, North Carolina House of Representatives. The Honorable Darren Jackson, Democrat Leader of the North Carolina House of Representatives. The Honorable Larry Hall, former Democrat Leader, North Carolina House and Secretary of Veterans and Military Affairs. Linda Coleman, former North Carolina Representative. Barbara Richardson, first vice chair of the North Carolina uh, House, I'm sorry, North Carolina Democratic Party and former North Carolina representative, the Honorable James Gaylor, the Honorable James, Pastor James Gaylor, North Carolina House of Representatives, the Honorable Susan Fisher, North Carolina House of Representatives, and the Honorable Teresa Stevenson, chair of the North Carolina Employment Security Unemployment Appeals Review Board. We will begin with Ms. Christy Jones. Ms. Jones, I tell you what, she may be having a little good morning. Very good. There we go. Good morning. Can you hear me? There we go. There we go. I hope so. Cooper right this minute is in a briefing on COVID. Um, we are working very hard to protect all of North Carolina and we appreciate his leadership and he asked that I just stop in this morning and congratulate and thank Representative Jean Farmer Butterfield for her uh, many years of service. I didn't realize that she's been a representative for a long time but when I realized she started back in 2003 that's a long time. And, you know, I've never been a member of the House of Representatives or the State Senate, but I hear it could be kind of like a dog years. Uh, those years are very long years, and she has done it so well and served the people of Wilson so well. Uh, Representative Farmer Butterfield, Governor Cooper, and all of us are grateful for your service to North Carolina, your leadership on so many key important issues. And we're most grateful that when you could 
could and should and deserve to retire that you say, I want to continue serving the people of North Carolina. And that is to be commended. Uh, personally, as a young Wilson County girl, I wanted to thank you. You have been a role model, a friend, and a mentor, just to everything to me and to so many other people of Wilson County. You've been a, just kind of a shining star, and we are so grateful. You have shown us how to be a great mom, great family member. You're dedicated to your family, great community member, uh, career woman, and a public servant. And I am grateful for your leadership, grateful for your friendship, and thank you for being willing to serve in this way. We look forward to working with you, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones. Before we go on, I do want to ask everyone that is on uh, WebEx or Zoom, please mute your phones or your computers. Make sure that we don't have any feedback. Make sure your phone or your computers are muted so that we won't have any feedback. And we're going to proceed on now with Dr. Betty Applewhite. Okay, Dr. Applewhite may be having technical difficulties. We can definitely come back to her. Mr. John Nash, are you available? Yes, I am. Very good. Well, good morning. Um, what a privilege and an honor it is to be invited to share some thoughts about Gene at this particular occasion. Um, I was speaking with Dave Richard, who is the Deputy Secretary of Health and Human Services at the Department of Health and Human Services here in North Carolina and is also my predecessor at the Arc of North Carolina. Um, Keep going. Okay. Anyway, I was speaking with Dave Richard, who is my predecessor at the Arc of North Carolina. He and I both shared same concern is that with the amount of time that we have available, how do you adequately talk about our friend Gene? Uh, it's not possible to do, but I'll do my best. Gene has been with the Ark of North Carolina for 32 years. Now, I've done the math on that, and I'm pretty sure there were child labor laws in place at the time, so I'm not sure how they pulled that off, <laughs> but how glad I am that they did. In my time in working with Jean, I've come to know her as a remarkable person. She is recognized in our state in dealing with people with disabilities and guardianship and restoring their rights. She is a national presence in helping people with disabilities receive their rights to choose and act and live their lives as they want. And that's no small thing. When I first met Jean, I was new to North Carolina. I was new to the ARC and I was very overwhelmed with what I was facing. And Jean stepped right in and helped me understand the circumstances and the needs. And I have trusted her and, and appreciated how she's handled the things that we do. When I first met her, she was caring for her aging parents. And not long after we were introduced, both her mother and her father passed two individuals who had such a remarkable and influential impact on her becoming the woman that she is. And I remember thinking at the time, how do I reach out and support and help her through these difficult moments, somebody that I had just come to know? And really what happened was Jean stepped up, she rose to the occasion, and she is the person that I've always known her to be, strong and in the middle of things that need to be done. As I have spent time with Jean in these years. I have sat with her in moments of difficulty. I have sat with her as she has addressed civic and statewide leaders, politicians and legislators, governors. I've had time with her in times of, of levity and a little bit of letdown. There's some pictures floating around of, of she and I dancing at one of our conferences a few years ago. Um, and by the way, she's a very good dancer. I have also had the privilege of sitting with Jean with people with disabilities who were in crisis, 
who are dealing with moments that would change their lives, potentially leave them scarred and damaged for the rest of their life. Some of them who are angry and frustrated, and Jean has always dealt with them in a professional and gracious and a considerate fashion. Matter of fact, the one thing that, the one thread that is common between the leaders of our state and the lowest in need and capacity is that she treats them all the same, with dignity and with compassion. And so how fortunate we are in North Carolina to have a friend in Gene Farmer Butterfield, and how fortunate the people with disabilities in North Carolina are to have a friend in Gene Farmer Butterfield and how fortunate I am to have a friend in Gene Farmer Butterfield. So with that, Gene, congratulations, well done. We're glad to have you continue to be able to be a part of everything we do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Nash, <coughs> thank you. We're gonna go back to Dr. Betty Applewhite. Dr. Applewhite, are you ready? Dr. Applewhite? All right, we'll come back to her again. Mr. Dave Richard, are you available? Mr. Dave Richard. All right, we can come back to Mr. Dave. Helen Torres, are you available? Ms. Helen Torres. All right. Mr. Lee Rodeo. Mr. Lee Rodeo. All right. I see Mr. Uh, the Honorable Rob Boyette online. You ready, Mr. Boyette? Mr. Boyer, are you ready? Yes, sir, definitely. Very good. Good morning, Gene. Good morning, President and President. This is a fantastic day, and we're all excited. Both for what Gene has done for the state and for our county, and also for what she's going to continue to do as part of the Employment Security Board. I want to go back for just a moment to about 10 years ago. And Jeannie and I were in a meeting regarding behavioral health in our area, in our region, back when Wilson County was a part of a vision center involving Nash, Edge, Cone, Green, and Wilson County. Jeannie and I attended a meeting specifically about services being provided for our intellectually developmentally disabled citizens, our IDD population. And from the very beginning in that meeting, my first meeting with Jean, she was very serious about this subject. She was well versed. She was service focused. Her expectations were high for all those people that were involved. And she wanted things to happen when they were supposed to happen. She was direct in getting to the truth. She cared about people. And it is my way that Jean will take these same characteristics with her to her meetings on this board, that she will particularly have high expectations. She will seek the truth, and she will apply solutions equally across the board. Jean, we're so grateful for the service that you provided our county and our state. We look forward to positive outcomes in the future and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyette. We are going to try one more time. Uh, Dr. Applewhite, are you available? All right. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Applewhite, we can hear you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Powell. Thank you so much. And we are going to continue on. Uh, is Honorable Clinton Sumner. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'm extremely honored and indeed humbled by this opportunity to be here this morning, to be a part of this great investiture of my friend Gene Farmer Butterfield as a member of the North Carolina Employment Security Board of Review. In the interest of fairness and truth, Gene initially gave me 10 minutes of remarks this morning. Then she abruptly called me back and told me I'd been reduced to one minute, and I begged for an additional minute. So I'm going to make every effort to given the time constraints before me. I've got a hurry to finish my remarks, but I am not going to rush. <laughs> Gene, I'm going to take you back a minute. I'm very sorry to do so, uh, but I've known you since 1975, 1975, well over 45 years. I first met you in August of 1975. That time, Toby. GK and I were in the process of putting together a law firm, our firm, Fitch, Butterfield, and Sumner, right here in Wilson. During that summer, I spent many countless hours with Jean. She opened her home to me, a poor country boy from Rocky Mount. She made me feel welcome here in Wilson. And those of you who live in Wilson know that the rivalry between Rocky Mount and Wilson has always been tantamount and great. And so she was sort of a turncoat in those days, but she, made, she gave the enemy comfort and care. She fed me. 
she encouraged me and she supported me. She supported all three of us at a very critical time in our lives. I have long understood and appreciated the fact that Jean was the driving force behind the three of us that gave our wings the lift we needed to soar. I shall always be indebted to you, my friend, for what you did for me at that time. Over the years, I've come to learn several things about you. I know that you are a devout Christian. I know that you've never been shy about rolling up your sleeves and doing the hard work that's required to complete any task. I also know that you are a strong advocate for the downtrodden, and those amongst us that have no voice in our society. Around the General Assembly, I understand that you are also known amongst your peers as a legislator that is more interested in solving problems than in making partisan political points. Jean, you are a great lady with tremendous compassion, charm, grace, and beauty. But most importantly, you're my friend. Therefore, I'm confident that you will be an outstanding and valuable member of the North Carolina Employment Security Board of Review. Ladies and gentlemen, in the future, if you recall anything about this day, remember this, that Jean Farmer Butterfield has always tried to live up to her mother's favorite expression, let the work I do speak for me. Jean, both your mother and father would be so very proud of you today because you have indeed let your work speak for you. My very best wishes and congratulations to you as you go into this next chapter of your life. God bless you, my friend. Thank you, uh, Honorable Sumner. Thank you so much. You made me feel really old. I was born in 1974, and you've known her since 1975. <laughs> that won't tell you how old she and I are. Though. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Those are great words, great words. It's Honorable Don Davis. Senator Davis, are you on? Yes, we're right here. Very good. Well, hello, everybody. And um, Representative Jane Farmer Butterfield, my dear colleague and friend, congratulations with all of my heart and as I said in the Senate Nominations Committee, um, this is indeed a bittersweet. It was really tough seeing your resignation announcement come through the email from the House Senate clerk. That's the bitter. But let me say, the sweet in all this is, without a doubt, I believe that Governor Cooper has made the right choice for our state in selecting you for our border review. We've been a lot through a lot together. We spent a lot of time out on the road, especially when we shared the same districts uh, or legislative delegation. And it was indeed an honor serving with you as you were the senior member of our delegation. I'll simply say it this way. Uh, Governor Cooper, he's been reminding us of the three W's, but your work reminds us of the three C's, calm, committed, and caring. Calm, committed, and caring. And yes, that campaign's informal slogan of your campaign, I love what I do and I'm good at it. <laughs> well, Gene, we know the history of that. <laughs> Often I would talk to Gene, everyone, and because we were out on the campaign trail together and spent so much time together, and we were in a setting and we were in a group and she said to the crowd, I love what I do and I'm good at it. And the crowd just went crazy. I said, Gene, this was after I just, Gene, you need to keep saying that. Don't stop saying it. Everybody loves it. And she's continued to say it. So Dean, I'm gonna say this. Yes, we love what you do and you're good at it. And as your friend and echo the words of your family. Let the work that you've done speak for you. God bless you, my friend, and God speak. Thank you, Senator Davis, so much. I love what I do and I'm good at it. I'm gonna steal that, okay? <laughs> Very good. Is Honorable Becky Carney, are you available? 
Am I unmuted? You are unmuted. Thank you. Um, and to all of you um, there at Wilson and those of you online listening, uh, it is my distinct privilege and honor to speak on behalf of my good friend and my seatmate, Jean Farmer Butterfield. Jean and I were freshmen together in 2003. I met her in 2002 during the campaign uh, and found her to be a delight and a go-getter just as a candidate. And I knew nothing about her at that point, but quickly I came to know Jean. Uh, I think often of Jean um, when I hear the quote from uh, John F. Kennedy uh, that said, one person can make a difference and everyone should try. Well, that sums up Jean. She made a difference in the 18 years that I've known her, but when I look at her resume, she more than tried, and she's still working in that capacity. She's never quit. There are many, many stories that I could share, but I would not share on this, this website, but there are, are many. But I, I like one that she has told me, and it reflects who Jean is today, in my opinion. When she was a child, she used to sit at her kitchen table with her mother. And she watched her mother teach people how to read the preamble to the North Carolina Constitution so they could vote. Well, if you couldn't read, uh, she taught them how to memorize it so that they would know what their rights were. If they didn't have transportation, her dad would go and pick them up or arrange transportation for them. Jane learned that at a young age, and she never quit. In high school, she talked about a lot about her, her civics class that she took and that civics teacher that empowered her at that young age that led to part of the course of life that she's been on in public service and public policy. I'm, I'm asked sometimes, and I just heard this question asked the other day, how are you going to make a difference for humanity? Jean, you have long done you have done that for so many years. And I know that you are not going to quit. The position that you have been appointed to by the governor, you wear that title well. But it isn't about a title. You deserve it because of the work that you've done and also for the love that you have for humanity and the love that you display. You know, love um, to me is action. It's a feeling, but it's action. And it's the opportunity for us to act on someone else's behalf and then do what needs to be done. Jean, you have done that. I'm honored to call you my friend. Your empathy and compassion for others has propelled you to where you are today and to this appointment that you so deserve. So you're going to be authentic. I know that. Jean is who she is, and that's so important, such an important attribute. So my good friend, as you keep caring for others, know that I'll always be your seatmate. I'll always be next door to the office that we've shared. So thank you so much. You've got my number, and Godspeed. You so deserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Carney. Is Honorable Darren Jackson Available? Yes, sir. Very good. Thank you for having me and being part of this important occasion. Today, I bring well wishes and expressions of support from the House Democratic Caucus. She has been a member of our caucus for 17 years, I believe. She served in way too many leadership positions to list today, but most recently, she helped lead our efforts on school safety and Medicaid expansion and not think of two more important issues at this time. Those two issues exemplify what Dean Parker Butterfield's service was all about. Fighting for those who may not be able to fight for themselves, whether it be the uninsured, our students, our seniors, our disadvantaged communities, Dean has been their champion. She did not simply go to real meals or insist that it was her way or the highway. She did all she could to build consensus and get things done. 
to move us forward on the important issues. Yet when the Republicans or some group refused to be reasonable, he knew how to stand her ground, stand up to those whose voices she represented. As I mentioned before, Jean served us for 17 years. One of the ways I watched her leadership grow and evolve is her willingness to serve as a mentor for newer legislators. He always had time to listen or offer advice or a kind word. Sometimes what was needed was not the kind word, and she would do that too when necessary. I'm proud to have served with her, and I'm excited for her as she enters this new phase of public service. I cannot think of a time in my lifetime where the people in North Carolina who have lost their jobs need a champion, need a fighter, more than they do right now. I know that Jean will make decisions fairly, and she will never forget that in every case, there's a person and a family that is struggling. The system needs to work right for those people, and I'm glad that she will be there doing that important work. Thank you for having us today, and good luck, Jean. Thank you so much, uh, Representative Jackson. Is the Honorable Larry Hall available? I am here and uh, I'm appearing with great humility and gratitude to give this. I hope that uh, I hope that everyone there, elected officials and Wilson, as well as uh, my former uh, House members and legislative mates, all are enjoying the fact to see the rise of Gene Farmer Butterfield to even a higher level. And I want to emphasize the fact that Gene has always been known and always worked behind the scenes, most of the time not seeking any recognition for herself, but looking to see what the results can be for the people of North Carolina. She's more of what we call a humanitarian. You know, there's a saying, I don't know who it's attributed to, but it certainly is one that we all know. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. And Gene Farmer Budfield has proven time and time again in every setting imaginable during the legislative career that she cares and people have continued to send her back because they know she cares and she knows the issues that she served on. She's been of particular service uh, during my time as Democratic leader as a group that held the caucus together as someone who was a sounding board and a listening board to let you know what was going on and what the needs were of the bigger team, the wider audience, the greater good. She collaborated with people across the aisle and across the spectrum to ensure people recognized the same important issues that affected us all and that required us to work together. Finally, her work in organizations within, informal and otherwise, to include Democratic women on issues that are now come to the forefront and people understand the importance of regarding women in our society today was both groundbreaking, but she took no credit for it and pushing those issues forward through Democratic women and the Democratic Women's Caucus. So I thank you, Jean. Uh, I recognize your greatness. I am glad to be able to count myself as a friend, to have attended and been supportive in many of your family events. I feel like part of the family, and on this day I have so much joy for your recognition and your assuming this post to further help the people of North Carolina. Again, thank you so much, and thanks to all of you who've been part of her success and her greater service. Thank you so much, Mr. Hall. Before we continue, I would like to go back to Dr. Applewhite. Dr. Applewhite, are you available? All right. Good morning. Yes, ma'am, we can. and families, and Mayor Stevens, and to my good friend, 
Bishop Burnaby and I have been friends for almost 65 years. And I've never known her to be any different than what you all see her today. She is extremely uh, loyal. She is compassionate. She loves her job, and as she makes her, she's good at it. She's the type of person that will always do what she needs to do. And so that's the message that I want to share with you today about her. And as we all have had some tragedies in our life, we all learn. You're knocked down, or you dare say a prayer. Pull to your face, pick yourself up, wipe the dust off, and get back into the race. That's the message I'm sure that my friend would share with those who she's about to serve. And so, with most of us going down, she's become that little energized body. She keeps going and going with her tenacity, leadership ability, communication skills and compassion for others. She was very for prospective customers, second with time. And for that, all of her classmates of class of 1966 are very proud of her, and we look for good work. Not only are we proud of her, we are here to help her. Thank you for your attention this morning. Thank you so much, Dr. Applewhite. All right, let's try. Is Dave Richard available? All right. Okay, just say a few words um, uh, uh, about Gene. Uh, let me say that I, I, I thought I knew Gene a long time until I've heard all of you say the years that you have. I met Gene 31 years ago as a uh, transplant from uh, Louisiana by way of Delaware. She's one of the first people I met in North Carolina uh, when I went to the ER. What I want to say is the first thing I, I noticed about Jean is she's the most welcoming person you'll ever know. She uh, she brought me in, felt like it was family. Uh, frankly, what I'd say is Jean taught me in North Carolina. Um, you have to learn uh, from the mountains to the coast, and she understood the state, understood what it meant, and helped me learn about about North Carolina. Also, remember the day Jean first came to me, like it was yesterday, say that she was going to run for the North Carolina House. Um, I I will say that. One, I was surprised at the time, but uh, when I think back now, is that it was always what Jean uh, was was meant to do, to serve North Carolina. She was doing it in her role at the at the ARC, uh, but to be a citizen legislator, someone who actually understands the community, knows what people need, it's the best of what the uh, North Carolina General Assembly is. It's not a one of those professional groups like we see in other states, but a group that is. Uh, dedicated to community, and Jean was that person, and not only to her community, but people across the state. Incredibly proud of the work she's done. As people have said, Jean is, Jean is the ultimate professional. Uh, she's an incredible mother, incredible family woman, a leader, uh, both formally and informally. Uh, she has many titles, but it's the work that she does without those titles that I think we're all most impressed with. She's civic-minded. Uh, but most of all, I think what we've heard from every mom is that she cares for people. And what I can tell you about Jean and watching her work, um, both from working with her at the art and her friend and in state work, is that she cares for all people. Uh, as someone who has a significant disability, just as much as someone who is a, a power broker in, in the halls of um, Congress or in our legislature. Jean cares, and that's what makes her different. That would make uh, this job appointment, this appointment is so important. As people have said, she will care about the people that come before her. She will understand what they do, and she will make the right decisions as she's done throughout her life. So, Jean, congratulations on this appointment. Incredibly proud of you, uh, but most of all, proud to be your friend and look forward to seeing these incredible things that you do. Thank you for the chance to be here. Also, wanted to mention that I hope you can see that. Uh, my colleague, who was a good friend of Jean's, was with me today, and again, we're so proud to see this, uh, this honor for you, and I look forward to seeing your service. Thank you so much, Mr. Richard. Thank you. All right, is Helen Torres available? All right. Lee Rodeo. Hello, friends. Sorry for my earlier technical difficulties. I uh, appreciate you having us all today, and uh, uh, thank you for um, being such a capable and uh, professional MC, Mayor. Um, I met Representative Farmer Butterfield uh, during the summer of 2018, uh, when on my first 
first day as her legislative intern, she walked into her office, introduced herself to me, dropped a large three ring binder on my desk and told me it was filled with the legislative priorities of every civic organization in Wilson and Pitt counties. She then asked me to aggregate them, order them uh, based on priority, summarize each multi-page pamphlet and write up brief proposals for how to turn each into legislative language. Bear in mind, this was my first day and I was informed that I had 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward two years and about a month, throw in a full legislative session in her office and an election cycle as her campaign manager in one of the targeted races by our friends on the other side of the aisle, in the middle of my athletic season, while managing a full course load at Duke, all while commuting an hour and a half one way to Wilson from Durham, all culminating with a 429 vote margin Yes, count 429 votes on election night. And as I reflect on it, I realize I probably have Representative Farmer Butterfield to thank for my being an otherwise healthy and athletic 22 year old with a hairline that's retreating faster than the UNC defense on a Saturday afternoon in Chapel. <laughs> <laughs> I say that in jest, um, of course. Uh, but working for Representative Farmer Butterfield was always a wild but fun ride. Uh, excellence in today's public sphere is something that's unfortunately hard to uh, come by, but Representative Farmer Butterfield will settle for nothing less. She's a strong leader who exudes compassion and empathy. She's a fierce ally and a formidable opponent, and I'm forever grateful for her giving me my first shot in public service. When I walked into her office for the first time in the late spring of 2018, I knew I'd just gained a boss. I had no idea I'd also gained a dear lifelong friend and mentor. I wish her nothing but the best as she proceeds into this next chapter uh, in her distinguished career of public service. And I applaud Governor Cooper as he could not have made a more outstanding nomination to fill this role. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Rodeo. <laughs> Thank you for those humorous words. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Ms. Linda Coleman, are you available? Ms. Linda, there we go. Linda Coleman, Linda Coleman. Good morning, everyone. And it is my true honor to congratulate and pay tribute to my dear friend, Jean Farmer Budfield. I met Jean shortly before I entered the General Assembly, but it was at the General Assembly that I really got to know her. I can tell you without a doubt that she is committed to excellence. She is ever eager to help out her colleagues, and she's always, always ready to help anyone else. If you've ever heard anyone pay tribute or, or, or say something about someone who is uh, who has been deceased, we have what we call a resolution. And if you've ever heard anyone speak on a resolution, you've never heard anyone speak like Jean Farmer Butterfield. You could tell that she had researched every facet of that person's life because you felt at the end of that resolution that you actually knew that person, even though you may never have met him. But that was Jean. She was committed to uh, her passion for the health and well-being of individuals and families. And she always, always was eager to assist anyone in any way that she could. And she not only cared for the citizens of Wilson and the people of North Carolina, but she, she is really a citizen of the world because she cared about everyone. And I can tell you about a, a time that we were in New Orleans, uh, the legislators at a legislative conference, and she and her sister organized and coordinated a, a tour for some of us to for the um, ninth district so that we could see the devastation
generation left by Hurricane Katrina. But that was Jean, because she cared about people not just in North Carolina, but all of the people of the world. And it's that kind of commitment to excellence and caring for people that really defined Jean's mission. And that was to make a difference in the lives of all people. And so Jean, I congratulate you. I honor you. I am glad that you are my friend. And I know that you will be excellent in the new role that you will be taking on. Uh, please uh, don't forget us. Thank you so much for all that you have done for North Carolina and everyone else. Thank you so much, Ms. Coleman. Bobby Richardson, are you available? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate this opportunity. I have listened to all of the previous speakers, and everybody was so excited about her appointment. When I speak on behalf of the North Carolina Democratic Party and our chair, Wayne Cookman, and our staff, we were a little sad to see Jean go because we knew that then, now we will have to work hard to make sure that we maintain her seat. For nine years, we did not have to worry about the Wilson County seat. For nine, um, not nine years, but nine election cycles, we knew that the constituents of Wilson and Ed Coleman would send Dean back to North Carolina back to the North Carolina General Assembly. But afterwards, we began to think of the opportunities that Dean had, and we realized that the state has not lost an individual, but we have just transitioned her into a much more needed role, and we know that she will do an outstanding job. As a member of the North Carolina Democratic Party and a legislature, and I served with Dean for six years. It was it has truly been, it was truly an honor to see her legislate and to communicate her values on the floor of the North Carolina General Assembly. So the staff at the North Carolina Department, North Carolina Democratic Party, and Wayne Goodwin and I wish you a wonderful and successful tour as the member of the um, Unemployment Security Board of Review. We know that you will carry your skills, your heart, and your concern for citizens to that board, and you will do an effective and efficient job. When I think of Jean, I also have to think of Jean as a Schoolmate, we went to North Carolina Central University. We are sorority sisters in Link and in the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. We also are mothers and we are friends. And therefore, I salute her for being able to wear all these hats and do such an effective job because she was never distracted from one or the other. She was very good at all that she did. And a quote that comes to my mind as a member of the Democratic Party and as a citizen of North Carolina is by Hubert Humphrey. And I truly believe that this is a uh, quote represent, represented Jean Palmer well and her thoughts about what her role is as a servant in North Carolina. The moral test of government is how that government treats those who are in the dawn of life, the children, those in the twilight of life, the elderly, and those who are in the shadow of life, the sick, the needy, and the handicapped. And this is truly representative of Dean Farmer Butterfield's attitude, work ethics, and drive as she has served North Carolina since 1966, when she started out as an educator, moved on into the disability community, and then into the North Carolina General Assembly, and now into another area of government. We are so proud of you. We congratulate you, and we wish you well. And 
and we know that we will stay in touch. We love you. God bless you. And we thank Governor Cooper for having the insight to know that you are the right person for the job that's ahead of you. Have a great career. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Richardson. Is Pastor Gaylord available? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good morning still to everyone, to uh, all of the dignitaries that are present today, uh, especially to Representative Jean Farmer Butterfield, as we acknowledge her as she takes her oath of office. I want to bring you greetings on behalf of the North Carolina General Assembly freshman class, also on behalf of Boy Tabernacle Church and the faith community representing Nash, Edgecombe, um, and Wilson counties. Whenever any of us experience any level of success, any level of advancement, we in a very real way are standing on the foundation, uh, the platforms, the framework that people that have gone before us have built. One of those individuals, when I think about those who have laid a framework and foundation, is Representative Jean Farmer Butterfield. I've known her in many ways over the years. First of all, as a constituent, when she represented me when I lived in Wilson County, um, and then as a community leader, pastoring a church here in the community, and then finally as a colleague in the North Carolina General Assembly. I am particularly grateful for this appointment by the governor. I want to speak, and I'll be done in about 30 seconds, I want to speak to her compassion and her consistency. I appreciate so much, Representative Barbara, Barbara Butterfield, how consistent you are. You never shed your personality based upon any individual or circumstance that is around you. You have remained so solid in all of the years that I've known you. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, every man is a quotation from all his ancestors. I want you to recognize Representative Barbara Butterfield you have planted seeds over the years. Those seeds now are producing fruit. That fruit will remain in the North Carolina General Assembly. It will remain in Wilson County. It will remain in the Department of Health and Human Services. It will remain in all the places that you have served your community. I wish you God speed. I pray for you often. And I'm thankful to God for your elevation. Congratulations and best wishes. And thank you for your mentorship for the next generation. Thank you, Pastor Gaylord, for those words. Is Honorable Susan Fisher available? I am. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and distinguished guests. It is indeed a delight to um, be a part of Jean Farmer Butterfield's day as she moves into this next phase of her life. I want to remind everyone that Fisher comes after Farmer Butterfield in the alphabet. And that meant that Jean and I found ourselves sitting right beside each other in committee rooms over the last 17 plus years. We hoped no one would separate us for our chattiness and our opinionatedness. We sponsored many bills together and primary sponsored several important bills that mm, a few of them lately have gone to rules and we're not real happy about that. But every session we sponsored important bills to address the minimum wage and education issues and those living with economic disparity and health disparity. From the beginning, I felt a camaraderie with Jean Ever since she and others in her class, Becky Carney, welcomed me in as a new appointee to the House in the second half of her first term. For that, I remain grateful. It's obvious from the dignitaries gathered today that Jean has varied expertise and experience and so many meaningful friendships. These will stand her in good stead as she steps into her new role. I am proud to know Jean and call her friend 
and I send every good wish for her success going forward. Congratulations, G. Love you. Thank you, Ms. Fisher. <clears throat> Is the Honorable Teresa Stevenson available? Yes. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Gee, good morning and honorable guests. My name is Teresa Stevenson and I am chair of the North Carolina Board of Review. And we're known by many names. We're also known by the Employment Security Board or Employment Security Appeals Board. But bottom line is we're an independent quasi-judicial body and we decide the Hunter Authority appeals and they are the second level appeals from the denials and decisions that are in the um, unemployment. We are also taxed with hearing the tax cases. And um, Jean and I have had many conversations about what the job consists of. And I know that with her wisdom, her experience, her dedication, she is going to be perfect for this role. And she and I, for the first time we spoke, I thanked her for her service because I was already familiar with her long-standing career in the General Assembly for advocacy for the disabled and for the mentally ill. And I really thank her for that service. And some of you that do not know very much about the board, um, we decided on this 3,000 cases last year. And but this year, with the unemployment um, and the pandemic and all of the tragedies going on right now, we are estimating we're going to be getting probably around 5,000 cases in the next three months. I have warned Jean ahead of time about this, and Jean is ready to go. And I am absolutely thrilled and thank Governor Cooper for appointing someone with a strong work ethic such as herself. And Jean, on behalf of my fellow board member, Andrew Brock, and myself, we welcome you to the Board of Review and cannot wait to get started to work next week. Thank you, Jean. Thank you so much, Ms. Stevenson. And I want to say thank you to everyone that gave words to all the distinguished guests. I know you can't see her, but Miss Butterfield has been wiping her eyes the entire time. So I will say mission accomplished. Yes. So let us move on. We are going to prepare for our oath of office. I understand that uh, Senator Fitch is going to call in. Senator Fitch, are you here? I am, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and we have Judge Beasley who is here with us at this time, and we are going to prepare for our presentation of the oath. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, to all the citizens of Wilson County and to my fellow North Carolinians. It is a pleasure for me as a senator, a friend, and uh, best man at her wedding. Uh, I've known Jean Butterfield for over 50 years. I watched her grow. I watched her serve people. I uh, understand her passion for folks. And so, Madam Chief Justice, uh, if it pleases the court, it is my pleasure to offer uh, Gene Farmer Butterfield as a commissioner for the Board of Review for the Employment Security Commission for her oath of office. We all have listened to uh, better than uh, 40 minutes to the different tributes that have been given to her. There's no need me trying to go back and recap them. But only to say that she has been tried through and she has prepared herself mm -hmm. for this gigantic appointment. We thank the governor. I now present former Representative Dean Farmer Butterfield for the oath of office for which she has been appointed. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, and to all the distinguished guests this afternoon, um, it is truly my honor to administer the oath of office to Representative Jean Farmer Butterfield. 
I knew that when we came here today that Pastor Bynum would open us with a resounding word from the Lord. I knew that we would hear very moving and passionate tales of Gene Farmer Butterfield's work with the people of North Carolina. And I knew that because the folks who are on the schedule to speak today are servants themselves and people who are working and serving and moving surround themselves with people who are doing the same. I honor her today for her lifelong commitment to the people of North Carolina. Anybody who has a heart for those with developmental disabilities, who has had a lifelong commitment to serving those who have no voice in North Carolina, who has worked and undertaken the least popular positions for the people when she knew that that was the right thing to do. She has stood and she has stood proudly and boldly. And for that, we are all very grateful. You have heard from the chair of this august body that this is a quasi-judicial position. And every single qualification and characteristic required for this position, Jean Farmer Butterfield exhibits. It requires discernment. It requires compassion. It requires the opportunity and the understanding that it is so important to firmly and fairly apply the rule of law. And it requires an unshakable desire to do what's right. And so we come together today to honor you and we're so excited about your continued service to the people of North Carolina. Are you ready to receive the oath? Chief Justice, I am ready to proceed. Please raise your right hand. Do you, Jean, former, but you want to recite each one? I'll let you recite it. I state your name. I, Jean Farmer Butterfield. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution. The Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. I state your name. I, Jean Farmer Butterfield. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will be faithful. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and to the constitutional powers and authorities and authorities which are or may be established which are or may be established for the government thereof for the government thereof and that I will endeavor to support that I will endeavor to support maintain and defend maintain and defend the constitution of said state the constitution of said state not inconsistent with not inconsistent with the constitution of the united states the constitution of the united states i state your name i g farmer butterfield do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that i will well that i will well and truly execute the duties and truly execute the duties of my office of my office as a member as a member of the North Carolina Employment Security Board of Review, of the North Carolina Employment Security Board of Review, according to the best, according to the best of my skill and ability, of my skill and ability, according to law, according to law. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Very good. Can we give the Honorable Jean Farmer Butterfield a hand? And I must say, it is such an honor to be in your presence today. It is. At this time, we are going to have words from the Lady of the Hour, the Honorable Jean Farmer Butterfield. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief Justice Sherry Beasley, Senator Milton F. Fitch, Jr. I gladly accept the position of Commissioner of the North Carolina Employment Security Board of Review. It is an honor that our Governor Roy Cooper and the General Assembly had the confidence in me for this appointment. 
On Wednesday, July 8, I was unanimously confirmed by the North Carolina House of Representatives and received overwhelming majority support in the Senate for this appointment by the governor. Rest assured that I appreciate their confidence in my ability to do this job with confidence, objectivity, and fairness. Being sworn in today as a commissioner of the North Carolina Board of Review is one of the highlights of my life. My acceptance, however, is bittersweet in that I retired from my seat as state representative for District 24, which for the first time in my career included all of Wilson County. This is where I was born, raised, and have always been so proud to represent in Raleigh. Having been elected to serve the people of the community where I grew up has been an experience beyond what I ever could have imagined. And it has been my honor to do so for almost 18 years. Though my party affiliation may label me a Democrat throughout my time in Raleigh, I have done my best to represent all the people in my district, regardless of any identifying label. It has been and continues to be my belief that what is good for one is inevitably good for all. And in spite of our rich and diverse differences, we share more similarities. We all want much of the same for our lives. We want to feel safe and secure in our communities, to have access to a good education for our children, to have opportunities for making a good living for ourselves and our families, and indeed to enjoy good health. We all cherish our individual freedom. I have always realized that if my neighbor is a healthy, contributing, productive citizen, then that makes my life better, safer, and more secure. This has been one of my guiding principles all my years of service. My legislative public policies and decisions on the state budgets, given the many committees and caucuses in which I have participated, have always supported those programs, services, and laws that provide the resources necessary to encourage and ensure productive and responsible citizenship. I trust I served well and vow that I shall continue that service in my new role as an employee representative on the North Carolina Employment Board of Review. As a member of the board, I will exercise careful judgment to uphold the unemployment laws of the state of North Carolina. While serving Wilson, Nash, Edgecombe, and Pitt counties, I do not want to leave the impression that this was an easy undertaking. No matter our party affiliation or the position of trust we hold, we have an obligation to all citizens of this great state to always put them first and foremost in the decisions we make. Government is for and by the people. There are many to thank and many that have supported me throughout my life and my time in the legislature. I am forever grateful and I have sincerely made my best effort at serving you well. My hope is that you will give the same support to the person selected to take the seat that I have filled for almost 18 years. I extend my warmest wishes to all of my Wilson County neighbors and others across the state for continued progress, peace, comfort in the days ahead. I appreciate all of you here today on site and watching virtually. It means the world to have your support. Please know that I proudly accept the position on the North Carolina Employment Security Board of Review and shall do everything possible to serve the state of North Carolina exceptionally well. In our great state of North Carolina, 
May we always choose respect over disrespect, facts versus fiction, unity, not division, and love over hate. I love what I do, and quite frankly, I'm good at it. <laughs> May God bless you all, the entire state of North Carolina, and these United States. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I'm going to tell you, I was hoping you were going to end with that. I was so hoping because I needed to hear it one more time. Well, I have something else that is for you. Yes. But what I need is my colleague. If you will come down. Ms. Butterfield. I'm I have a proclamation for you. Yes. Whereas Jean Farmer Butterfield was elected on September the 10th, 2002, as the Democratic nominee for the House of Representatives, 24th District, defeating three other Democrats for the right to replace North Carolina Representative Milton Toby Fitch, who had been appointed to the judiciary. Whereas she was elected in November 2002 to the North Carolina House of Representatives the first of nine straight elections to represent the 24th district, which includes Wilson County. And whereas Representative uh, Farmer Butterfield has long been an advocate for education, quality health services, and economic development. And whereas she served as a majority whip from 2007 to 2011, meaning she ranked among the state's most influential legislators and helped marshal votes in the North Carolina House while Democrats were in the majority. And whereas she has fought to protect jobs in Wilson County, including working to ensure incentives for Bridgestone and to preserve state facilities such as Longleaf Neural Medical Center and the Eastern North Carolina School for the Deaf, whereas she worked with the city officials and state and federal transportation officials to ensure funding for the Tiger Grant project for the US 301 corridor, and whereas she has been a champion of the early colleges across North Carolina including Wilson, the Early College Academy, and whereas Governor Roy Cooper nominated her in June to the three-member North Carolina Employment Security Board of Review, and she was confirmed on July the 8th, 2020, which requires her to end her long, distinguished career as a state legislator. Now, therefore, I, Carlton Stevens, your fraternity brother, your adopted son, <laughs> your friend, and also your mayor of the city of Wilson, North Carolina, by the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim Friday, July the 17th, 2020, as Jean Farmer Butterfield Day in Wilson, North Carolina. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, we have reached the end of our uh, program, and it has been so heart heartfelt. Um, again, I want to say to everyone that was in attendance, either virtually or in person, thank you so much for being a part of this celebration. It means so much to our city to have Ms. Butterfield elevated to another level. But everyone that knows me knows that um, I am a man of faith. I'm a man that believes that prayer needs to precede anything that we do. And so I'm going to ask that you keep Ms. Butterfield in prayer as she moves to the next level. Because I'm sure she's a praying woman, but I'm sure she's going to really need to get down on her knees right now. And so I just want to remind everyone that the prayers of the righteous avail as much. So let's keep our friend in prayer. And I want to give special thanks, of course, to Congressman G.K. Butterfield, uh, Office of the U.S. Congress to Grant Goins, our uh, great city manager, for making sure things worked out for us today. And of course, Harry Tyson, assistant city manager, Rebecca Agner, our director of communications, Grant Robinson, who tirelessly worked to make sure that things worked out today, uh, to Sydney Duggan, Daphne Perry, Cynthia Ellis, Joya Bullock, 
Emily Hogan, and Khalil Eatman. Uh, Ms. Butterfield wants to give you a special thank you as well. We are now going to conclude. If we could just conclude by giving Ms. Butterfield one more hand of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we are complete.